Hey everybody, it's Dominic from the Primetime Treasure eBay store and YouTube channel. Welcome back to another fun-filled, action-packed episode. You know, I'm mindful by talking to so many of you through this channel and also through my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, that many of you are new into reselling. You're just getting started, which is awesome. And there's also many of you who haven't exactly gotten started yet. You're thinking about getting started. You're watching some videos like this one. You're doing some reading. You're talking to your friends and family. And you're trying to decide, you know, how this all works. How do you figure out whether something is valuable when you go to a sale? How do you figure out what you should price it for when you decide to resell it? So I promised people in my group that I would do a video on this topic, which is dedicated to checking comps which is short for checking the comparable sales for the item that you had or for something similar uh, to what you had if you can't find an exact match. Now I'm going to preface this video by saying that this is both a simple subject and it's a complicated subject. In other words, the way you actually go about trying to figure this out is relatively simple, but there can be scenarios where there's lots of complicating variables that come into play that um, you know really affect how you're going to judge the value of the item and we could get into those more complicated scenarios another day but for this video i want to just try to keep it simple as an introductory initial video which is just going to focus on checking the values and determining the values for items that we could definitely find an exact match for online so that's what we're going to focus on now if you have other scenarios that you want to take me through um, and and let me know like what's going on and you want me to do a video about it let me know that either message me through my facebook group or make a make a comment down below and uh if it's something that uh, i think we can address through a video i'll be happy to do that so uh, let me know about that so anyway the three items i'm going to take you through are a toy a book and a clothing item which would be a, a hat don't focus on the items the items are really irrelevant what's really important is the process so whatever it is that you sell if it's not a you know if it's not books clothes or toys just substitute whatever it is you sell you know tools or, or whatever it is you know dvds and just follow the same process and it will work for you so let's start with the first item and this is going to be a toy and as you know i recently purchased an epic collection of funko pops which are these rectangular boxes that have these vinyl or usually vinyl figures inside of them uh, and uh, i bought them for uh two hundred dollars there's a about 150 of them and after selling 11 of them i was already into profit so at this point and this is one i listed today uh, I'm already into profit, whatever I make on this. So that's the scenario you want to put yourself in. And, and I mention that because if you purchase like that, uh, that helps you. You keep your costs low. You keep your purchasing costs low. That really allows you to be flexible with how you price your item. So keep that in mind. And the what I'm going to take you through when I go through these scenarios is something I like to say, you know, it's not literally true, but forcing people to buy from you. Now you're not literally forcing them, but what I'm saying is you're, you're setting up a scenario that you basically almost make it impossible for them not to buy from you. And that's why I have a lot of success in um, the summer months. A lot of people talk about the summer slowdown, but I don't really have a problem with that. And it's because of the process that I'm going to take you through here. Of course, don't get me wrong, there are some days that can be slow, but this process in general uh, helps you um, avoid that for the most part. So let's go through this, this this toy. Now this one is called, as you can see, his name is Amazing Carlos. Okay, and he's a special toy because he has a sticker on it which says Funko Ween. He's limited to 1,500 pieces, so that's going to make him more valuable. That's why you're going to see high prices on him. His condition is pretty good overall. Um, there's a small dent on the top, but besides that, he's in great shape. So we want to take condition into effect when we look up our items, but we'll talk about that more when we look up more complicated scenarios. So let's go to 
eBay and I recommend you having two tabs open if you're doing this on desktop one tab for looking up what the item is currently going for on the market but the other tab is going to tell you uh, we're going we're to go to the advanced button right here so just click on advanced this is what we're going to do to find out what this item is actually worth okay the only way you could figure out what an item is worth is by knowing what it's sold for remember that because when you try to make purchases you are going to deal with other people who are trying to sell to you who are going to tell you what they think the item is worth based on what someone is currently trying to sell it for but that is not how worth is determined and I like to make a joke with people who try to make that pitch to me I tell them you know I just pick like a random worthless object in the room I say I could take this plastic cup and I could put it on eBay right now and ask two hundred dollars for it does that mean the item is worth two hundred dollars obviously not and then the person gets my point it's only worth what someone's willing to pay and this is how we figure that out we're gonna go to the advanced tab we're gonna type in the item right here so we're gonna type in um, amazing Carlos Funko and then we're gonna type in Funko Ween these are just some keywords that help distinguish it and we have some options down here and the two you want to focus on would be completed listings and sold listings now what a lot of people do and this is a mistake is they'll just click on the sold listings because they just want to know hey what did this sell for the reason why you don't want to just know what it's sold for and I talked about this in another video is because it's potentially very misleading if you only see the ones that sold you're gonna miss all the ones that potentially didn't sell knowing if the items if other items did not sell or did sell tells you about the items what we call sell-through rate so you want ideally to have an item that has a high sell-through rate because that means it's very popular it means most of the time that it's listed it sells but if you have an item that maybe it's sold high once but then 10 other times it didn't sell at a similar price range that means you're gonna have a tough time moving that item so for that reason we want to click on the completed listings because this is going to tell us uh, about the items that sold and did not sell over the past 60 days so I'm going to hit the search button and it brings us right here as you can see to items that ended the most recently I don't want that what I want to initially try to establish in my mind is what's the maximum that someone has shown that they're willing to pay for this and the only way I could do that is by going price plus shipping highest first so I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna leave it so that it's all listings in other words this encompasses auctions plus buy it now the reason for that even though I primarily sell through buy it now is because if the highest price was based on an auction which this was not but many times it is this one you could see was purchased uh, brand new through the buy it now feature um, still if it was if the highest value was based on an auction that does tell me still regardless of the, the way that it was sold it tells me the most someone was willing to pay for the item <clears throat> and this is the same item right here and you could see and you might be shocked if you have you know no experience in toys that this item actually sold for a hundred and nine dollars plus eight dollars shipping okay so we're gonna go down and we'll just get a sense of the sell-through rate and you could see here it also sold for eighty nine dollars plus eight dollars shipping two people tried to sell it for eighty five eighty six didn't really move on those okay let's go down some more eighty dollars best offer was accepted now just as a uh, if you haven't seen this before anything that shows up in green at this time and this is June 8 uh, June 15th 2018 although tech yeah it's June 15th 2018 um, anything in green is something that's sold anything in black is something that didn't sell now eBay changes this stuff up all the time uh, so uh, you know sometimes what didn't sell shows up red and it's different on the app sometimes than it is on the um, uh, on the desktop version so you know you just have to figure out what it's like at the time you watch this if you watch this two years from now but um, this is currently what it's like so we're gonna go down some more 
Okay, it sold for 65. Uh, by the way, you see how it says it was originally $80, has a strike through, which means the best offer was accepted. It doesn't tell you the exact uh, price, but because it was positioned above the 65, now you see there was $8 shipping included. We at least know it sold for over 65 or it wouldn't have been placed there. So you do at least know that. <clears throat> so we go down here, sold for 65, sold for 48 plus 10, so that's 58, sold for 55. So what's this telling you? This is telling you have an item that's highly valuable, it's highly sought after, it has a high sell-through rate. That's important because now you have a lot of knowledge going into when you price it and you have a lot of knowledge going into your negotiation. It's the psychology of negotiation. You want to know this stuff. You want to see if you have leverage or not. And trust me, when you have a highly desirable item, you have the leverage in the negotiation. So um, let's go and let's figure out what the current market is doing with regards to this item. Now I already have this typed in. So I'm just going to click Amazing Carlos. Now, by the way, I just went to the regular eBay screen. That's not the Advanced tab. So this now tells us what it's currently going for. Now, it's automatically by default going to bring us to what eBay considers is the best match. We don't want that. We want to look at the... Because if, if we're trying to figure out what we're going to price it at, we need to know what the competition is doing. So we're going to go to Price Plus Shipping Lowest. It's so another reason for doing this. Although not all eBay users shop this way, a lot of them do, and th those are the people who I'm going after as a customer, is the person who's going to search for and sort the items by price plus shipping uh, lowest first. So also what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit it, in my instance, to buy it now because the, primarily that's how I sell is to buy it now. I have two things up on auction right now. I usually don't, but they're very rare items. But usually I do buy it now. And so I'm competing with the peop, uh, for the customer who wants to just buy it right now. Uh, so we'll just keep that in mind. That's why we're doing it that way. And the first listing you see is actually mine. It's priced at $74.99, free shipping. So that's me right there. I'll click on it so you can see. There you go. Primetime treasure right there. Okay, now let's go back and let's go down. So let's imagine I'm not there because this is what it looked like before I got involved in this today. We have a price here of $79.99. So what I'm immediately going to do is I'm going to click on this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this person's feedback and I'm going to check it out. And although not all eBay buyers will do this again a lot of them do and that's who i'm going after so let's see what do we have we have one negative feedback says seller is very rude and threatened to leave me bad feedback if i left her one and this had to do with a funko pop item all right but all the other ones are positive is this enough that it's going to dissuade somebody to go to this person probably not so um I'm not going to disqualify this person as a competitor. If this person had a ton of negative feedback, then I probably would, but I'm not going to, in terms of discarding this person as a competitor, but I'm going to save that conversation for another day because that's what I mean by some situations get a little more complicated. So I'm going to go back and you can see here, these prices go all the way, you know, 85, 89, 109, 97, 109, 109. It's all the way up to 109 plus 795. Now, um, why are some priced at 109 plus 795? Because there's likely what a lot of people did is who have this is they did this part of the search. They saw one sold for 109 plus 795, and they said, "Wow, this is worth 109 plus 795, and that's what I'm going to be able to get." So then they list it. They put it up for 109, 795 shipping. See, two people did that right there. In fact, here's another one who did it for 109.97. So, you know, we have two that are almost an exact match to the other one. And then the person starts to wonder and get upset why the item is not selling and th thinks that eBay's broken. eBay's not broken. The what the problem is and the reason why this item is not selling for you 
is because you have other people who have it priced lower in similar condition. And yes, there may be a scenario where someone happens to land on this item, doesn't do their their you know their homework, they just make an impulse buy and purchase it and you get lucky. That can happen sometimes. For all we know, that's what happened to this person right here. Now we don't know exactly what the market was like on March 19th when this sold. So I don't really, you know, factor that in too much in terms of saying, well, okay, well, I must uh, get this price out of it. Because, again, the market was different in March 19th than it is on June 15th, two months, almost two months later. What I'm concerned with is, is the item that is the lowest price, is that item comparable to mine? So now we're going to focus on the item. I haven't ruled out the buyer. Uh, sorry, I, I mean to say the seller. I haven't ruled out this seller as a competitor. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to. I'm going to look at the item, and I'm going to analyze it. Now I've already done this, so I'm going to spare you from doing this on every panel. But this person put up pictures, has the item and a pot protector, and I could tell you that this item is in great shape. Mine has a little dent on it. So um, this is a this is what I would call a competitive item to mine. So I talk about. Um, and this is tongue in cheek, okay? But I talk about forcing people to buy from you. Uh, in other words, creating a scenario where you're not obviously literally forcing them, but you're making it almost impossible for them not to choose you as the person to purchase from. And how do you do that? Well, one way, if you go to my listing, it's partly based on price. But it is also based on your reputation. Your reputation is really important. So if you go to mine, you see what the average person is going to do. And they're going to look at this. They're going to say, wow, 100% positive feedback, top rated plus, And they're not going to investigate any further than that. And they're going to say, wow, that looks good. Okay. So then they're going to go. They're going to look at my item. They're going to check it out. They're going to see that I did disclose that there's a dent on the top of the box on the back right. It's relatively minor. It's really not a major issue. So 100% uh, positive feedback, top rated plus, and my price is $5 cheaper. I'm offering free shipping, plus I'm offering free returns, which this person is not. See, free returns, that person isn't. Also, I have a guarantee that it will be delivered by June 19th. This person does not. So. I have made it extremely difficult for somebody who really wants this Funko Pop not to buy it from me. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to automatically buy it now, although a lot of people will do that, but they'll at least throw an offer my way and then we could get um, you know, the process underway in terms of negotiation. Now, a couple things. Why am I comfortable putting it at $74.99? when somebody else sold it from 109 plus 795. The reason why is because one, I'm already into profit with my item and if someone is willing to pay me $75 for this and I could just move this tonight or move this tomorrow, that is a nice chunk of change to get real quick and I can move my product. I don't mind waiting on items, especially if it's a unique item, but in this situation, that's a great profit on that item. I don't need to try to wait out to get 109 plus 795 because that's very unlikely to happen with the way the market is situated right here with this item. So I want to make myself as competitive as possible. That's what I just did. So uh, I'm going to go through the other two items a little bit quicker than that because you know, I just want to go through this first one in a little more detail so you just understand what I'm talking about. But just let's just go see how it works um, with the book real quick. So this one is a hardcover book. I do specialize in selling comics. It's a hardcover comic related book. It's published by DC. It's called Identity Crisis. It, Identity Crisis. It's one of their most popular um, storylines. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to, again, go up to the advanced tab and I am just going to click identity crisis and you see I already have this typed in from before DC hardcover those are my key terms completed listings and it's already set now whoops 
Sorry, accidental button click there. All right, price plus highest shipping first. All listings. We're going to scroll down. Let's see if we can find it. These are all different books, so you got to scroll through some of this stuff. We're trying to find the purple and black one. We'll keep going. There we go. Now, someone purchased it for $21. Um, best offer accepted. So less than less than 21, but somewhere above, let's see, 7 plus 7, somewhere above 14. So somewhere between 14 and 21 it's sold for. That's what that tells us. A little frustrating that eBay doesn't tell you what the best offer uh, price was, but that's the situation. Now keep in mind it does say first printing, so you want to keep that in, in mind with regards to books, because if yours is not a first printing, then it's not an identical item. You need to try to find a match. Mine is a first printing, so no problem there. And so that tells me someone was willing to pay somewhere over 14 for it. Let's go down a little bit more. This person did pay 14 for it. Okay. This person paid 975 plus three dollars. So you get the point. It has an established value of about 14 to 13 dollars, somewhere along those lines. So now let's go. Over here, I told you we run through this a little bit quicker. So we're going to type in Identity Crisis DC Hardcover on the regular eBay screen. We're going to do a search. We're going to sort it. Now, the good thing about this on the desktop, it automatically saves your search. See, it's not bringing me up to best match anymore. It's bringing me up to what I was looking at before, although I do have to still click on buy it now. So I'll click on that to switch it over. Now, look at this first one. It's a, it is the same book, but it does not have the slip cover on it, the dust cover. We are going to ignore that because ours does have the dust cover on it. So that's not a relevant competitor. We're going to ignore that. We're going to move forwards. That's not the same book. Now, that's me again. You see this? $15.99, free shipping, free returns, 100% positive feedback, top rated plus, all that stuff. Why did I price it for $15.99? Because this guy who or, or woman who has the book, same book as mine, I already checked it out, has it priced for $13 plus $317 economy shipping, 100% positive feedback, so good competitive uh, seller for me to go against. Uh, so they've got it $16.17. I've got it $15.99. Now a couple things about the psychology of this. There have been studies that have shown that someone will literally be more likely to purchase an item if it says $15.99 and free shipping versus an item that says it's priced for $10.99 plus $5 shipping. It's the same price, same exact price, but people are more willing to purchase the one that says free shipping on it because they like the feeling of getting something free, not paying for shipping. Of course, they are paying for shipping. It's not literally free shipping because shipping costs are kind of worked into the price. Buyers know that it's, you know, in the back of their head, but they still just like that single price and not feeling like something's added on. That's why I always do free shipping on my items. All right. So again, you see the whole point here is that now someone wants this book, someone goes on and says, okay, let's like, you got to put yourself in the situation of the buyer, right? The buyer goes on and says, all right, I want to purchase Identity Crisis DC hardcover. They click that in. They do exactly what we just did here. They come down to this first listing. They check it out. They're going to purchase this one. Chances are over this one. I mean, I gave them no reason not to. So again, when I talk about forcing somebody to, to pretty much buy from you, okay? This will, if you use this technique, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you will see an increase in your sales uh, and um, you will definitely be shipping more things out, okay? Now, the key to doing this, by the way, is you have to make sure, and this is a topic for another conversation, but you have to make sure you're sourcing your items for a low price. So if I went out and I purchased this item, for $12, then I'm going to have a problem listing it for $15.99. I actually bought it for a few cents through a bulk purchase, so me listing it for $15.99 is no big deal. Let's go through one last item before we wrap this up because I want to just get into something clothing related since I know there's many of you who do clothes. And I just decided to pick a cap or a hat. So this is WrestleMania 22. 
that is uh, a, a popular topic, wrestling, uh, particularly you know, world wrestling, entertainment. Uh, I, you know, that stuff tends to sell pretty well. So let's go here again. We're going to go up to the uh, advanced tab. And I'm just going to type in WrestleMania 22 hat. Okay, search. Now, nothing shows up, right? No results for hat. Now, you could scroll down. Sometimes you might find something similar down here where it tries to bring up similar listings. But I already looked through that. It doesn't. You also, what hats you want for baseball hats, you want to also type in cap. See if anything shows up that way. Nothing does. So, okay, now what do we do now, right? We don't have a comp. Well, we don't have a comp in terms of what it's sold for, but let's go and look what is currently happening on the market. So, we're going to go over here. We're going to type in WrestleMania. WrestleMania hat 22 right there. Okay, now what do we have? Well, who do you think this is? Right here, we've got two of them. One's priced at $19.99 and one's priced at $20 plus $4.75 shipping. I'm going to give you a guess at which one of these is mine. You got it. It's this one here, $19.99. There we go again, primetime treasure. Someone wants to go on and purchase this hat. Who do you think they're gonna buy it from? The one for 20 bucks, 19.99, or the one for $20 plus 4.75 shipping? Now, as a little joke, I initially priced it at $22 because it was WrestleMania 22, just to see uh, you know, how that would go over. Still a couple bucks less than the 20, um, 4.75. Now, it didn't sell for that price. Now. I'm going to do a whole separate video on, on this topic, but just as a little preview, what I'll do is I'll, I'll keep that price up there for a week. If it doesn't sell after a week, I will lower the price a little bit. So after a week, I dropped it down to $19.99, and then we'll see what happens from there. Um, and so that's the basics of it. That's how you do it when you could find uh, comparable items. You could find the exact same one because you could see here that's the exact same hat. So, what do you do in situations when you can't find the exact same one? We could do a video on that one day. Let me know if you want one like that, or just tell me other scenarios. Interact with me a bit more on the uh, on the channel in terms of telling me some of the things you want, some of the other video topics that you want. If you stuck around this long, I appreciate it. I know this one's a little bit longer, but this is an important tutorial video that I think is just so crucial and so critical that if I just did it, you know, rapid fire, super fast, that I'd be doing you a disservice. So I want to make sure that you know this because I do see a lot of people making mistakes with this sort of thing and not knowing exactly how to price stuff. So I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please make sure you hit that like button. Again, drop a comment down below. Come to my Facebook group. You heard me mention it, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. The link is right down below. All you got to do is click it, hit a join request, and I will let you in if everything looks okay with your profile. And lastly, uh, please make sure you subscribe. The subscription counts are going up. We are getting close, I can't believe it, to 500 subscribers. So help me get there. Hit that little treasure chest that pops up at the end or hit subscribe anywhere on the page. Subscribe to uh, the Primetime Treasure YouTube channel. And I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Take care, everybody.